Stuart Bloor and I've been into my pike fishing lately if you've been watching my videos reading my blogs then you know that and I'm certainly up for the challenge and I'm going to fish the Staffs Worcestershire Canal this week where pike certainly in the sections I fish are few and far between in fact in the years that I've pike fish on there I've only ever caught more than one fish on one occasion and I had two on that particular day mostly I'm pioneering I'm targeting places where you never see an angler never mind a pike angler and sometimes the baits in the water there might not even be a pike in front of me but there's only one way to find out and that's to cast out get those dead baits out I love float fishing for pike using that method so shall we get on the water's edge and see how it goes great I can see the uh the pike it's not a big one but the thrill of the Staffs Worcestershire Canal is not the size of the fish but actually catching one in the first place I'm fishing just a single treble and I can see it there right in the jaws of the fish it's coming to the net and yes what a brilliant feeling that is to see the pike getting folded by the mesh of the net brilliant Right, let's get this on the uh, mat and I'll show you. There you go. Beautiful canal pike. I love pike fishing with a float. It's great when you get that initial movement. It's lying there motionless in the water. Maybe the odd ripple from wind or current. But then you know that you've got a fish taking an interest in your bait and the float starts to move a tremble a shake a tremor starts to move across the water and then it disappears and you strike and you're into your fish it's a great feeling i love pike fishing with dead baits and with a float absolutely love that initial moment when the pike picks it up and takes it and runs i love the fight i love netting the fish i love photographing it i love admiring it but most of all what i really like is when it goes back in the condition that I caught it in. And that fish has just gone back into the canal to live and fight another day. And before I cast that rod out, I will show you my setup. I'm fishing, as I've already said, with a float. And there it is. And what I've got, the water is about six feet deep. So what I've got at just over six feet, only a couple of inches over, is a stop knot as you can see there, uh, power gun. I sometimes use red if I'm fishing at a little bit of distance so that I, ca I can spot that as I cast out and get, the, and get the depth right because that's important because I've got the float and then it's a very, very simple setup, very simple. I've got a lead, as you can see there, it's a free running lead, so no weight at all, uh, resistance in terms of the fish when it picks the bait up. I've got a bead over the swivel and then I've just got a, a wire trace coming down and I've got a single treble hook as you can see that's a size 4 so I've gone for a big one because I'm just using the one hook and the blood you can see on me by the way is not from the pike it's from me and there is the bait just a, a simple small roach and the reason why I've got the power gun uh, set is because if you float fishing you need to make sure that you haven't got too much excess line above where the float sits. So when you cast out, what happens, obviously, is the lead sinks and it takes the bait down and your tray sits on the bottom. And then, as the float will move up the line, you want it to stop by the stop knot so that you're in direct contact with what's going on underneath. Because if you've got too much line from where the float sits in the water to where the stop knot is, say, a foot, all that activity could be taking place beneath the surface of the water, the pike picking the bait up, turning it, swallowing it, all that could be happening without you even being aware of what's going on. And then as the pike moves off, it tightens to the stop knot and suddenly you know that you've got a fish on. Well, what you want is you want to be in direct contact. So as soon as the pike even messes with the bait, even nudges the bait, that you get the little bit of a, a tremble on the float. So that can take a little bit of experimenting of course, but it's all very simple. You cast out, you see where the stop knot is. If it's that far over, move it down a little bit. That's all you need. There will be a little bit of wind movement and, and perhaps uh, natural current that will take the float up. So if you've got a couple of inches over, that's fine. It'll take it up. But what you want is what I'm doing here now on the canal. You want that stop knot to sit 
right above the uh, the float and I'll show you exactly what I mean now so when you cast out there's a stop knot and you want it to sink and you want it to be settled like so I'm watching my floats while I'm talking here that's why I'm looking away from the camera but as you saw there just a a few seconds of uh, footage of the bank this is obviously the the towpath side and it's been strimmed taken right the way down to to nothing and this happens a lot on the canal even during the winter you see the uh, the powers that be coming along with the mowers and the strimmers taking everything back now i understand it on the far bank where trees are actually growing over branches for the sake of the boats they need to be kept in check but this side we have a, a walkway so folks can walk up and down it's very broad there's plenty of passing opportunity as well there's no need to take this particular uh, section out it, it's between the walkway and the canal itself because it's actually a, a, a nature reserve in effect it's a highway for small mammals like shrews I see those sometimes I'm out fishing uh, voles m mouse species and of course wildflowers at the moment I can see lesser celandine broadleaf dock common nettle um, cow parsley all coming up they will be in flower very very soon and then I know on this particular section um, vetch butterbur whole range of different species will come up and then what happens the powers that be come along and take it all down there's no need for that particularly in this day and age of, of cost cutting um, it must cost a lot of money all the canals up and down the country going along and taking them down to, to, to nothing there's no need for it I'm not whinging and I'm not moaning and I'm not grumbling or complaining as they say on the internet just saying it's a natural nature reserve keep it that way It's a nice bright sunny day today, although it is quite chilly, it's fairly windy, pretty gusty at times as well, but more importantly the wind is coming from the north, so it's quite cold in that respect. I noticed looking at the uh, weather forecast last night, and I think it's important as anglers we do stay tuned in to what the weather's doing, I noticed that tomorrow we've got some snow predicted, in fact one particular newspaper which I think this one particular uh, paper does play into the hands a little bit of the uh, the British obsession with the weather because the headline news literally was a, a whiteout. I doubt whether it will be that bad. In fact, as I looked at the, um, the, the app on my phone and looked at some of the other uh, information out there, it's mostly on the, on the high ground. It's not going to be too bad elsewhere and it's going to go in no time at all. I think as anglers, and this is my own perspective, we have to stay tuned into the weather, certainly here in the British Isles, because it's so unpredictable. We have to stay tuned in, and from my own point of view, the weather will determine what species I fish for, it will determine which venue that I go to, it will affect my tactics, my bait, my techniques, and all that sort of thing. But the one area that it will never affect is whether I go fishing or not. I will always go fishing regardless of the weather, with one exception perhaps, and that's because I live on the, on the watershed through England, and so therefore it's quite high. And um, when it snows heavily, the street I live in, literally you, you're snowbound, you can't get it in and out. So from a, a sensible perspective and a sensible approach, when we have heavy snow, then I don't go, I can't go, that's the important thing. But whether it's raining, snowing, windy, wet, dry, sunny, those things have no bearing whatsoever on whether I go fishing or not. It's important to know what's going on, but don't let the weather dictate to you. Obviously you can't change it, but use it to just determine where you go, what species, etc. Don't get hemmed in by the weather. I'm getting ready to go now so the video comes to an end. Just a short session, 
three and a quarter hours actually. A couple of boats have just come through, so there's a fair bit of movement starting. So it's time to uh, it's time to pack away. But as always with fishing, it's not about the number of hours you fish, but it's the time at which you fish. So this week I will have planned um, several first light sessions for pike on the canal. And as always, if you want to know how I get on in the remainder of the week, then check out the written blog. You can find the link here on YouTube. And if you're out and about yourself, tight lines. <laughs>